So, welcome to our quick guide on how to use Microsoft Teams. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to load up a web browser. We're going to use Google Chrome for this one. Um, you go to the address bar and you type in teams.office or .microsoft.com, either will do. And it'll take you to a login page. Now, if you've logged in before, it'll just ask you for the password, but obviously, um, if not, it'll ask you for the username as well. The username will have been sent home with your child, as will the password, and it's generally in this, it's this format here, as you can see. So let me just get the password in for this one. Okay. Uh, whether you sign in or not, stay signed in or not is entirely up to you. I'm going to say no for this. And... Here we go. So, what your child will see on the left-hand side is their class team. So, in this case, it's 5EG. If we click on the team, then underneath there, you'll see that uh, there's at least one, what's called a channel. Now, in this case, it's general. Every class has, has a general channel, but there may be other channels as well. Um, the other thing that you're interested in are the, uh, the tabs along the top. So, the first one that you get access to is posts. In posts, that's really just a class discussion um, between the teacher and the rest of the class. So you'll see lots of posts in here belonging to lots of different children. It's, a, it's an open forum rather than a private one. Uh, if you wish to start a new conversation, you can do that down here. You can click on it. It's a good idea to click on the, the little icon here with little A, um, because if you do that, you end up with various text editing tools uh, the good thing about that is that if you then type something like so and you press return after it it doesn't automatically post what you've said it will allow you to type another paragraph um, and in order to do that you just click on the, the little envelope thing um, sorry the uh, the post icon down here and so on okay so that's the, that's the general whole class uh, chat facility up the top again next to that you've got files um, these are files which can be um, can be stored for the whole class. They're class materials. Uh, next one, you've got the class notebook. Now, the class notebook is incredibly useful, and this is where gonna, most of the stuff is going to happen. Most of the content will go. Most work is done. And there's a little explanation here about the various different things that are in here. So there's student notebooks, there's the content library, and there's the collaboration space. Let's have a look at that in more detail. If we go over to the, the icon here, the little arrow, you can see that this is where you find those items. So up the top, we've got the collaboration space, which is here. Each of these places is organized into various folders. These are folders which have been set up by the teacher. So in this case, we've got English, science, spelling, maths, and topic. It might be different for each class, but it's probably gonna be something quite similar. If we go into the content library, and into the students' own um, folders as well. They're all organised in the same way. And the only difference is that the content library um, contains uh, read-only content. So think of it rather like as being photocopies of worksheets that you can, you can access, you can look at, but you can't do anything with them. So it's really just information. It's content that you can view. The collaboration space can contain things where people can work on documents all at once. So, for instance, if I go into the, uh, the maths page, uh, we could make a page here and other people would be able to collaborate on that at the same time as the student. So, down the bottom here is where you see the student's individual files. Now... Now, the student can, can put their own content in here, uh, which the teacher can see. The teacher can also put content in here as well. Um, and then the student can alter the content, work on it essentially, and then the teacher can see what the student's done. So if I go into the maths uh, section here, you can see that there's already an untitled page, which we've made as an example. There's a, a worksheet here. And you can do some things up here. So if you want to type something, all the student's going to do is, uh, is click and type something, okay, and then the teacher will be able to see that, so it, essentially they can work on the sheets. The teacher can then mark it as well by typing comments on it as well, uh, and you can see that this one uh, has had a, a well done sticker put on it already. If we go back to there, um, that's pretty much all we've got in terms of 
of the class notebook. Assignments is the next one. Um, now, this is another way that the teacher can set work, and this might be the preferred way for the particular teacher. The good thing about assignments is they, they appear as assignments. Um, the work can be done on them. Um, and then if the student goes into grades, they can see that the teacher has viewed it and the teacher can mark it as well. And it's a much more kind of formal way of, of setting work and grading it. So it might be that teachers decide to use assignments for setting work um, rather than the, um, the, the child's own space in class notebook. The last thing the child might want to do is go up to the corner and just change their avatar so we can change picture. Um, you can upload your own picture, obviously something appropriate, um, and you know, make it look a bit more personal. So that's just a very, very quick guide on how to use Teams. Hope it's helpful, um, and there will be some more information on, on its way at some point.